So these are the dev notes. Dev notes number 10. Kind of crazy that we've already had 10 sets of dev notes. Dev notes, rather. So uh, in the dev notes, we're going to talk about the first thing. So basically, it says that we're getting a new invasion, a new hero, which is Scarlet Witch, which we're all excited about. Um, a new companion upgrade system, which is interesting. And it does say that this update is coming in the second week of May. So a very exciting stuff there. Um, now let's jump straight into Scarlet Witch. So I, it was between Scarlet Witch or Deadpool for a lot of us. The one thing that I think is really interesting here is that it says that she is specialized for PvP and having mastered the uses of chaos and curses. So it's Doctor Strange-esque, but PvP focused. So this is very both interesting and concerning for many reasons, because I feel like if she's too good at PVP, she'll just be the new Spider-Man and just will run all run over people. And I bet we kind of talked about it in our in the live stream, but I bet you that she will be a, a Spider-Man hard counter. Yeah, Scarlet Witch PVP focused. Very interesting. All right. So it says with the dark hold in her hand, Scarlet Witch frees uh, her desires. And all right, so we're not going to read all of it, but basically she uses different types of magic. You can see there's some type of spell ball there. Scarlet Witch uses three types of skills so similar to when magic came out we had the soul sword we had the dark magic and we also had um, the summon limbo different types of skills so it looks like that's the same kind of thing they're doing here with scarlet witch so we have hex energy witchcraft and chaos they do talk about that a little bit more here so hex energy is a class skill that uses telekinetic power to subdue the target or throw various objectives objects to inflict strong damage to the enemy and then it says the characteristics of it is strong damage, high guard damage, subdues target when conditions are satisfied. So the la the first two are pretty obvious. So it does a ton of damage and then um, it does high guard damage, which is good for the uh, Magneto invasion. <laughs> but then um, the subdues target when conditions are satisfied. This kind of feels like what they were trying to do with Doctor Strange and they ended up like pulling back on that. I don't know if you guys remember that some of his specializations required them to be like guard broken or different stuff like those type of effects. And that concerns me because that's why people didn't like Doctor Strange because it was clunky or heavy, it didn't feel. So when you go to Witchcraft, a skill class that uses magical powers of Scarlet Witch to grant various effects to aid in battle. So the characteristics of Witchcraft are create clones, stealth, and apply buffs to yourself and your allies. So like we said earlier, this is kind of like um, Captain America or Doctor Strange, like their their support class is how I'm reading this. But it is interesting that you can go into stealth because um, I could see that being very, very good, obviously, for PvP. We see how good that um, Black Widow is uh, when she goes invisible. She's, I mean, rocking Dimension Duel, so that's a thing. Um, and then creates clones. So again, Doctor Strange already does that too, so that'll be interesting. And then the last one, which I feel like this one in particular could either be hyper broken or just completely awful, but it's Chaos, a skill class that uses the power of darkness to inflict powerful status effects on the target. And then the characteristics are apply status effect to enemies such as silence, confusion, curse, and instability. My, my Oh, so curse controls the target's movement, instability increases the target's resource consumption. So those sound really amazing, but at the same time, I'm a little worried about what that's going to do um, like if you need the status effect accuracy to make them land and then what if you don't and it's like as you're building her and you have to you, you don't have enough status effect accuracy or accuracy in general and you just miss then you have like a whole build that's like garbage so that it, it makes you go all in on a stat uh, uh, a stat which is a little concerning it's not as balanced as like you know the other two sound all right so now they're talking about the new epic invasion so this is uh it's going to be in line with the new marvel studios doctor strange and the Mul multiverse of madness which is fantastic but the interesting part which is both interesting and kind of disappointing since i went all in on uh the thanos invasion so these new special battle badges um they're they're aiming to diversify them which is great but now these are going to be um increased max damage upon crit hit so that, that sounds like crit damage, basically. Various effects will be applied when max damage occurs. So basically, if you have a high crit rate, which I feel like a lot of people do that are building for PvP, um, or even PvE, really, you're going to be doing a lot more damage and apply different effects. So that's curious. I'm not saying it's going to be broken, um, but it's definitely curious how it's going to work out. And it definitely sounds like that will be good for Wanda, if you think about it. Applying different various effects. When we look at above how it talks about um, under hex energy, under uh, subdues targets when conditions are satisfied. I wonder if you can kind of like five head that and make it so 
you can have a various effect that applies one of the conditions that you need to do more damage. That would make sense to me since they're coming out all at the same time. That's what they did for Doctor Strange and Captain America, where they had high guard damage after they were rebuilt, reworked, and um, that made it so they were really good in that Magneto invasion. So that's my guess on that. Um, officializing Officialization of two types of Alliance content, the Alliance of Mega War and Alliance Raider now official. They're no longer in beta. So basically what they're doing with the um, Alliance Raid at least, because I don't, I don't do Alliance Omega War all that often because I don't have the time, unfortunately, with my work schedule. But you do, even if you're unable to participate, you still get the rewards in your messages, which is great. Alliance Raid, so they're going to say the Alliance Raid rewards will partially change, but then down here it says the Alliance Ranking Rewards increase. So it sounds like we'll be getting um, a little bit of a change in the Alliance Raid rewards, but overall it's going to be better which honestly the gold has been great especially for someone like myself who just got done reworking and re-rolling a whole bunch of cars and gear because i went through millions of gear millions of gold rather alliance ranking so this is the part that's a little concerning in this one to be part of the top alliance be sure to be active in all parts but it does say where is it we plan on giving a time limited buff one week to the highest ranking alliance so this i'm interpreting this as if you get the highest rank if your alliance wins, then the next week you get a whole you get a buff for that whole week, and then it'll uh, it'll change if you don't maintain number one. This is both good and bad. I'm curious if this limited time buff is only for PVE or if it's both for PVE and PVP because it's for both. This has some serious implications for um, Dimension Duels and Omega Wars, which is a little concerning depending on what the buffs are. But we'll have to see what that is. It's a different. It's a very unique change and encourages people to care about alliance content. But um, if the buff is too broken, that could be a concern for sure. Because then the, the whales, if you will, could all team up in one alliance and just kind of snowball their rewards, which would be a lot. Uh, new companion upgrade system, Transcend. Basically, you can nano fusion your, um, your companions. So you can do it up to six times. I'm a little surprised by this because, I mean, some of my companions aren't are six stars, but none of the, like the high level ones, which is interesting. But we'll have to see. And then, so this one was actually a pretty good quality of life change, in my opinion. It's a little concerning on the quality up. So when it comes to Omega cards, once you get them to six star and you try to like nano them, if you will, or increase the quantity or the power of them. So you get that little number, which is a random. Um, but yeah, so you'll actually be able to uh, change it. So if you have the same exact Omega card, you can get the quality up. So the, after you get them six stars, you get the number at the bottom right of the card and you can actually increase it by whatever levels in a controlled fashion now, but you have to use the same exact Omega card, which is kind of concerning when it comes time for special cards, because now we're it's it's pulling us in the direction of like you, you can either double down on your main and make the quality higher, or you can use that same special card on a different alt. So kind of pulling in both directions there. And then option change. So you, now you can actually choose the bonus stat, um, but you can use um, a six star mega card. The same one cannot be used, but it does have to be, be the same level, which is good. I like that. Overall, these are some fantastic changes. I'm excited for them and it's going to be kind of wild, but Scarlet Witch is our new hero and she's going to be specialized for PVP. We'll have to see what comes of that.